I could tell, I can't tell that story. I can't tell you that story <laughs> about Tom Cass. There's a couple stories, a couple, three stories I can tell. I mean, is there any kids in the house? Oh no, this is an 80 plus group here, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Uh, <laughs> Hi, I'm Rob Ward. Welcome to A Word on Westerns, and we have a special guest today. He's a blues man. He is a talented, award-winning actor, and he's going to dash right in here. Chris Mulkey, let's hear it for him. Yeah, yeah you're a little out of breath. I'm okay, Rob. Okay. I just right. had a Chesterfield, the parking lot. And I, <laughs> That's uh, a cowboy isn't cigarette, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, Bruce and I split one. Uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm good. Let's go way back, okay, Chris? Oh, okay, come on. All right, you're like from the Midwest, I think Minneapolis, Milwaukee. You went to university and you, you did a film in 1975 that won a lot of awards. Yeah, I was at... Uh, I was working at a repertory theater company in Minneapolis, and um, I wanted to do, I wrote a, a, a screenplay, it's a great screenplay called Attack of the Sewer People, which is really <laughs> intellectually firm. And it was about uh, this Italian film crew goes to New York and they're gonna make a film about these sewer people that live in the sewer people. And they go down to the sewer to film it, and of course, there are sewer people there. And cowboys, but sewer people basically. So they're so, riding rats down there. Yeah, right? they're riding okay. rats, but that, that didn't work out. So I, 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 I produced a film called The Suitcase, which won a bunch of awards. I took it to AFI and wanted to get in, but I didn't have any juice um, with AFI, so they didn't. So I stuck around. I, I, I worked on thesis films for all these guys, and when they were the, as, at the AFI, um, this uh, cowboy actor from uh, Rawhide came over to talk to us, right, and did a little talk around. And only 10 people showed up. And I was I was the 10th, right? And it was uh, Ray Sharkey and Marty Brest and all these guys and me, right, 10 of us. And, they, and he had just done a bunch of us, Spaghetti Westerns, Clint, uh, man, <laughs> what's his name? Clint. Clint Walker? Well, Clint, Clint East <laughs> something. Clint had, had just done uh, for a few dollars. And and he was working with Sergio Leone. So he talked to everybody and he went around the room and said, what do you want to do? Well, you know, Rupert, what do you want to do? Bruce, what do you want to do? And, and he comes, Chris, he, what do you want to do? I said, well, um, I'm a writer, but I also want to uh, get over as an actor. That's what I, and, uh, and um, he said, well, go back to Minneapolis after you're done here and write a movie and produce it and star in it, but don't, don't direct it. And I said, that sounds pretty hectic. So, okay. So instead of saying, yeah, right, Mr. Hollywood, I'll just, I was go raise some money and make a feature film. I went back to Minneapolis, wrote the film called Loose Ends, and uh, we won uh, the USA Film Festival, which was the basically Sundance. And then uh, we won Edinburgh, Berlin, um, I don't know, some Australian thing. This wasn't the rat story, though, was it? Nope, the nope. Sewer. This is about two guys. This is it's called Loose Ends. It was about two meatball mechanics in uh, working at a Chevy dealership. It's just a great film. And then 10 years later, the same group wrote another film called Patty Rocks, starring my late wife, Karen Landry, and we won Sundance again, and it played worldwide, and, you know. Awesome. Well, and in between that, though, you did a film shot in Miami that has one of the greatest posters, the one sheets I've ever seen, yeah. called Tomcats. Tomcats. And that's a revenge film, sort of like Death Wish, but sleazier, is that what I understand? Is that right? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, you gotta get sleazier. And you're the lead in that. Yeah. Your sister gets killed by these thugs that are running around on a murder spree. Yeah, and I kill them all. Why? Wow. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah, in different ways too. <laughs> like, for example, what? One way. Um, what did I, I shoved a gun in a guy's mouth and pulled the trigger. Wow. Well, that was, and That's then, enough, Ben. Word road change. <laughs> and then I ran another guy down. You can only down. do that once, right? It's pretty messy. Yeah. yeah. So we didn't, Rob, we didn't have any permits um, to shoot in <laughs> Miami. And that was the days when uh, the, uh, the gangsters, it was like in 1975, and th there was just when cocaine was coming in and all these, there was all kinds of street violence because they're all, people were getting shot all over the place, kind of like L.A. today. But anyhow, um, <laughs> 
<laughs> but they, uh, but so we had guns. I had a three for seven Magnum, you know, because of you know Clint's dirty hairy gun. Uh-huh, I had his uh-huh. dirty hairy gun. The guy says, "Listen, if the cops roll up on us, just drop the gun and walk away." Just because we don't have permits for the guns or even film on the streets. I said, okay, but we didn't have any problems. And uh, we had real guns and we were shooting full. How many days did you shoot? Yeah, we did five weeks in Miami. Wow. That's a longer shoot than most of these TV movies that you see today. I suppose. I don't know. We had a good time, though. People, it was great. Wayne Crawford, Natty Lane. Sure. Wayne Crawford, he did that Indiana Jones satire. Mm -hmm. That was funny. Yeah, he passed on. He went to the big... He went away. The yeah. boot hill. Good guy, though. Those films brought you back to Hollywood, especially after winning the Sundance Award the second yeah. time. How yeah. did you land an agent? Well, I, the first time, in Loose Ends, the black and white feature, I wish y'all could see it because it's really a cool film. Um, so I, that was in 1975, 76, I came to Hollywood. And uh, I just went up and I, uh, I said, uh, I arranged a screen at... Um, at Red Fox's screening room. Well, I remember over on, uh, it was on La Brea in Santa Monica. Oh yeah, I like that film. That was a good <laughs> film. You little crazy kid there, man. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, so, so, so uh, I had then agents came and then uh, David Eidenberg from STE, which became Paradigm, uh, signed me and that was in 76. And so I just been working ever since. You sure have. Yeah, a little bit. In fact, I've, I've got, some notes here on the number of films that you did, oh. which is like in, in 2021, you did 13 films. In, well, that was a big year. In 2011, <laughs> nine movies, and then you took a year off, it seems like, and in, in 2011, you only did seven movies. Wow. You know, what just taking happened? it easy. I don't know. I mean, you know? I think it was an ankle, a high ankle sprain. It was well, a show, high ankle. Show me those boots. Tell us about your oh, boots. Oh, yeah. Here. This is the, I got these. Hey. I'm going back down to Austin uh, this tomorrow. I'm going to play down in Austin. But um, so I did a movie called Deadland. And this is CM. That's, that's the cash money. <laughs> that's Chris Mulkey. And this is my character's name um, over here, Hobbs. And then over here, um, as a, as a, uh, a country singer down in Austin, I'm known as Cadillac. So we got the Cadillac right there. <laughs> and, but, you know, I wish they'd paid me on the movie what these boots are worth. <laughs> <laughs> now I got played okay. I, I, oh, the I movie's going to be good. I've seen the trailer. It's like a, a border crossing. Border drama, yeah. yeah. Uh, Julio Cedillo and me and these Venezuelan actors. It's a kick-ass movie. It's a great movie. Yeah. Are you a bad guy in this? Um, well, you know, bad is relative. <laughs> <laughs> you shoot anybody through the mouth with a pistol in this one? You know, if I did, if I told, the, if I gave that away, <laughs> but I, blood is spilled. Mm. Okay, well, with a title like Deadland, it's yeah. something to look forward to, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a border, uh, border control guy who is the head of the food chain, and uh, then a lot of people that t- come across the border don't get any farther than the other side of the border and we take their stuff and hide the bodies and then they all come back to visit us. How did you meet Walter Hill? The Long Riders won, what, that's the first time I noticed you because somehow my yeah. parents didn't let me go see Tomcats. <laughs> a sleazy movie, <laughs> it's a sleazy movie. I could tell, I can't tell that story. I can't tell you that story <laughs> about Tomcats. There's a couple stories, a couple, three stories I can tell, I mean, is there any kids in the house? Oh, no. This is an 80-plus group here, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, all right. Okay, we're all friends here. Okay, and this will be cut out, Eddie. So, anyhow, I'm just but nuts. But in, in, back in, remember 75, y'all? Remember 75, how it was pretty good, right? So, I get down to Miami. I'm a single guy. Okay, and uh, so I meet... The girl who my girl my girlfriend right in the movie and we're method actors right and <laughs> the, our first scene is we're in bed and 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 we just finished uh, wrestling and uh she won and uh <laughs> i get a phone call and oh no did you hear about your sister and then i'm grief struck and i run out so she said well, let's get together and get some chemistry going so we 
We acted out the scene in my hotel room the day before we acted out the scene in the movie. But you had all the phones removed so it wouldn't slow down the rehearsal? Of course, I'm a pro. Okay. <laughs> Amazing stuff, you know? Just a drop of a hat was just like, <laughs> so I, God bless her. <laughs> but Walter Hill was a different story. I, I auditioned for, I don't know, I don't, I think I just got hired. I met him someplace and I got hired. And so I went down and did did uh, Long Riders, you know, that was cool. Was was that in Arkansas? Where did they shoot that? Uh, Clayton, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, oh, so at the same time I, I had, uh, I got Long Riders, I got a movie called uh, Roller Boogie. Oh, sure. And Roller Boogie, right? And I was gonna, and then um, I thought, I have a rule, I, I always wanna do the horse movie. If there's not a gun or a horse in it, I don't want to do the damn movie, right? So roll a boogie, because uh, I was a boogie skater down in Venice. If you go to YouTube and, and uh, look up Charlie's Angels, there's an episode called <laughs> Angels on Skates. Mm -hmm. And it's me in a onesie, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm doing this stuff. <laughs> it's good, Angels on Skates. If you don't like it, I'll buy the pizza. And so, uh, <laughs> so two toppings only. But, um, so you took the long riders. I took the long riders. Yeah, of course. Know? But I, but since then, I've gotten two movies at once about four times, and I just do both movies at once. And <laughs> how, I don't know why we work? didn't. And what's his name? Uh, guy, the guy from Dirty Dancing that we passed on. Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze took my part and did his thing, and he's he was a terrific actor. Mm. He's wonderful. So well, you might have gotten him. Ghost if you had taken that role instead. You know, if is a big word. It's a ton, two-ton word. <laughs> two-ton word. It's well, just... I'm glad you worked with Walter because later on when he did Broken Trail, you were awesome. Ah, you were thanks. so bad. You didn't even have to shoot anybody in the mouth, and that was just the intimidation. And by then, it was just a natural thing for you, wasn't it? Pretty. Yeah, it was pretty much. Uh, well, Bobby, Bobby, uh, he Duvall, he's, he was a big, he liked my stuff, so yeah. he was. Well, he had produced that too, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, so he was He was fun, he was fun to work with. Uh -huh. He goes, Bulky, do you like a, like to improv? And I went, yeah, sure, improv's great. So I'm standing over a fire and we're talking and I say, okay, well, it's your night, mister. And I walk back to my horse, it's just ground range, right? And I, I'm supposed to pick, begin my range and I turn around and say, well, I'll see you again. He says, okay, young. We'll do that. So I go, well, it's your night, mister. And I walk back to my horse and get the ground race. I put, put, put my foot in the stirrup and I go to swing up and he takes a bag, the blanket, and he snaps it in my horse's face and goes, what about smallpox, Bob? What do you think? The horse wheels away from me. I get up on the horse, you know, I crank its head back and I go, I'll see you again, mister. Bam. And I'm off, right? And I come back, I come back and Bobby said, how would you like that? And I went, well, that was pretty cool, Bob. You better, are we going to do it again? Oh, no, we're going to. We did it three times just like that. My horse kept creeping back. And so anyhow, yeah, Bobby. Oh, man. Well, he does have quite a sense of humor, though, doesn't he? He's a funny guy. Yeah. I went to, I, I went, huh, Mulkey, let's go get a steak dinner. The steaks, you know, this is Canada, I know, but Argentina, those steaks will kick your ass. <laughs> Bobby. Well, he does love to eat, too. Yeah. Did he, uh, did he tango much? He did dance, yeah, he danced a lot, yeah. We had a, we had a good time this time. Mm -hmm. uh, and your pal James Russo was in that too, wasn't he? Jamie, yeah, Jimmy's great. Yeah. You know, it's. I'm so thankful that, I'm, I'm thankful to be here. This is great to be on your, your thing and be with y'all, y'all. But we were, we stepped out of our trailers right by the, the Fraser, whatever river comes down from uh, Calgary, you know, and. And I step out of my trailer, you know, and 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 and, uh, and I've known Russo for like I don't know forty years, right? And he's he's got his bowler on his head. I got my bowler on my guns. We're all guns. They used to just just give us guns. Remember that? How much? You need more ammo? Yeah, probably. You know, <laughs> <laughs> right? Those days are gone. But uh, you know, we step we and I go, wow, you look great. And he says, you look great. And we stood there. And we walked into this pasture and just stood there and listen to the river run and wear our cowboy outfits and stuff. And I was going, you know what? Just, you could probably just put a bullet in my head, right? I'd like to go right now, you know, just keep it simple. 
but that was not my fate. No, well, luckily, luckily for us, too. But now that you've done this show, the curse of uh, a word on Western just, just may happen. Can I tell you a little story, though? Please. Okay, here's a gun story, which is really good. You know, um, well, my dad, I, my, I grew up in northwest Iowa by Sioux City, and my dad had a hardware store, and he sold guns, and I hunted with my dad, and it's great. So, um, anyhow, I get to Hollywood, and I, I, I write a, I write a, t um, a play and called Rhodesia is Ready When You Are, and it's about mercenaries. And the gag in the play is that my friend takes out a 38 detective, you know, and um, with a full load blank in it in a small theater and goes bang like that and shoots me. And I have a mouthful of blood. I take a beer. Well, if you're going to kill me, then I'm going to have one last drink. And I take the, the beer with the blood in it. And there's a white wall there. And he pulls the trigger. And I go, plam, like that. And it goes blood like that. And, you know, the people freak out. It's great. <laughs> night after night. We won we won a, uh, won a L.A. Drama Critics Award. For, it was fun. But um, so anyhow, so I'm, I'm on my motorcycle. I drove a motorcycle in those days. I still do. And... Um, and these guys try to run me off the road in Laurel Canyon, you know, up by the, the canyon store. But I know that there's a stoplight down there on, run me off the road in a Porsche, two drunk guys, right? And I went, well, you know, maybe you should go see those guys. So I downshifted and boom, I was down. Pretty soon they stopped right at the stop sign on Crescent Heights and, Santa, and Sunset. And so I pulled up and unzipped the bag that I had strapped to my tank. And the guy goes, hey. And he goes, gives me the signal, you know, he tells me to go s screw off. And I said, well, what do you think about this? <laughs> and I pull out the 38. <laughs> <laughs> Those things are useful. Oh, man. <laughs> but I also, in the, in the chamber, I had, I had six full loads, oh. okay? And we all know the six full loads. Um, so how, anyhow, many, back, how many people were in the car? Two jerks. Oh, the which three equals each. Like, Tap them out. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I didn't want any trouble. I just wanted to give them a little thrill. They're telling the story a different way, I'm sure. <laughs> we went, got our shorts cleaned out and everything. Um, so anyhow, so, so like in Rambo First Blood, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we were shooting M16s and M60 machine guns and stuff. And, and um Chris, you need another clip? You need, you know, you guys know. <laughs> Pocket full of bullets. And now on, um, on our show on Farhaven, uh, we had a great armorer who I've done three movies with, uh, Chris Wilkes, who had uh, air pressure guns are totally safe. But we also had on Farhaven really great experienced people and actors who didn't do stupid stuff. And we had no problems, and it was just it was just terrific. And whatever keeps people safe is what I want. So, but if did not to go on because I know y'all have other guests, but I have a Christmas entity on Spotify called Vic Malky and the Blue Veins, and we sing Christmas carols like Christmas in the Big House. Um, I want a Harley for Christmas, and my favorite, Spank Me Santa. Oh, so a big hand for Chris. God bless you. <laughs>